Hello, this is Lolly. Welcome back to my next tutorial for pouches. These are paper pouches that we are making to store little coupons or craft supplies or dyes in a swap, whatever you want them for. This one I have done using paper scraps that I have in my collection. So let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take a nine and a half by six inch piece of cardstock like I have on all my other size pouches. I am using a cream color because I want to use um, off white. And I think what I wanted to do was to use some scraps of a map, but I didn't want to cut this particular map up. So I photocopied it and I will be um, putting, sticking some strips out of it to put in there. And that way, like I'm going to use uh, Denver or Fort Collins or Greeley or Colorado Springs, whatever, I can cut that slice out and keep using them over and over again because I can keep photocopying my map. And when I am cutting paper, I always end up with all of these stripes. So I am going to get out some that might work well with this project. That would be cute. All right, the other thing we're gonna need is some paper underneath our work and um, a good glue stick. You could Mod Podge this if you want. And I'm going to cut my map into some strips. Okay, so I have that. Oops, I want to get some more here. There's some strips I can play around with. So, the other thing I want to do is I want to score this so I know where um, my fold lines are going to go. So I'm going to score at four and at eight and one eighth. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be the flap. So I know this is the back. And then with this folded, this is the front of it. So the flap is going to cover. So I don't want to put anything here that's my favorite paper, but I could put something down here. That would be my favorite paper. And with the glue stick, you could also Mod Podge these if you want. I'm going to go all the way down to um, the bottom of my my score line. I'm bringing it off the end just a little there. And I'm going off the edge just a little bit. And I want to add a little more glue. Let's get Denver in there. And I've got some white border there, so I'm going to put that off the edge. And I'm using the Yoohoo glue stick. I really like them. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna peel this up. So this is the front of it. This is the back, so I can turn around this way if I have, for instance, maps or something that I want. It's unidirectional. Now, another thing you can do with these scraps is like, I like this one, but it's too short. However, you can always put one in the middle of another one like this, you know, where it just kind of doesn't go all the way through. Like that. It could go right in the center of one of these, and then you can even put a saying on it. I think I like that. Alrighty, now this is the flap, so if I have anything that's directional, I would want it to um, be this facing this way. So I have to look to, when I fold this, what is going to be shown here. 
I like this stripey thing. Now we're going to trim this up. And we're going to save all these scraps too. Now we have our cute little pouch here like this. And you want to make sure that your corners are glued down really well. So if you see any of those sticking up, give them a little extra love. Okay. All righty. And the other thing I'm thinking was that I could add a little piece of a map right in the middle here, just for interest. I have to realize I'm going to have a snap here too. Now, with some of these, um, pieces here that we have just cut off, we could also cut punch shapes out of them and add them elsewhere into the design. I'll show you what I mean. For instance, I have this finger here, this finger point, and it could be added to the map right there to point to Denver. but you could use squares, circles, hearts, whatever you want to add volume to here. So I personally would like to seal this so that my little edges don't pop up, but um, there's other ways. You don't have, you can use Mod Podge. You can use um, laminating sheets, which we have, which I have a video. I'll, I'll give you the whole link down below to all of these that I've done so far in this collection. And I think what I am going to do is to stitch across everywhere there's a juncture between one and the other. Okay, I am done sewing. Now let's zoom in and take a look at this. So I did a zigzag. You can see it better on the back. I did a zigzag stitch between most of the strips that I have in here. I like the rustic look it gives it. I did not do one on the very bottom where these two join. I didn't think it would split well to fold over. So here they are here. Very cute. Now, but when I go to put in my uh, my accordion uh, side gussets here, what we're going to see is that it's going to be a little harder to glue. So let's go ahead and get those accordion sides made. These are two inches by three and three quarter. And I'm going to score them at half, one, one and a half, Because I have all that thread in here, usually I just use a paper glue to insert these, but I am going to use my Fabri-Tac. So fold it in an accordion fashion. And get your binder clips handy. Now, with this shape like an M, I'm going to put the glue on the one side of it and I'm going to make sure I get plenty, but I don't want it to spill out. So when I squeeze this together, not on the flap side, but on the other long side, I'm going to line this up with the top and the right edge. So I'm going to hold that just for a sec because I need to make sure it's going to stick with all that thread in there. Same thing here. Turn this over and line it up with the left and the top. I did a, um, a felt journal cover made of felt scraps and I called it my Franken, uh, Franken felt. This is almost like a Franken pouch because we're using all our scraps up. Okay, now.
get those binder clips on there. While that's curing, I am going to get my cam snaps out and get me a hole in here. Let's get this measured. The other thing about me sewing on the top is now I have threads also where my snap needs to go. Okay, I'm going to measure three inches across. and half an inch in. I'm putting my ruler at one inch and marking the half inch, which is right there. Almost, I just missed a stitch. <laughs> okay, so we need the awl, or the pokey tool as we like to call it. There we go. And now I'm going to mark the same thing on this side. Yes, I can see it now. Okay, so what color snaps do I want? I have all of these. I do like the um, this color here, but that's a butterfly, and I don't really need a butterfly. Uh, ba -ba. Let's go with, I want to go kind of traditional with the shapes. I think I'm going to go with the gray. I'm not looking for something to add brightness and color to it. I want this to stay kind of mute, muted. Okay, so let's get out the two pieces that look like thumbtacks. And then we need one, con cave, one convex and one concave. That is not it. On the front flap, it goes in through the front. Now I need to poke the hole that I marked with my pencil. And now this time, for this one, this smooth part that looks like a tack comes through from the back. And this is the concave piece. Okay, so there we have it. And you could round the corners. It's not going to interfere with the sewing at all. So I might just do that. There we go, I used the quarter inch rounder. Very fun. And look at what a fantastic way to use up your scraps. So, you know, we tend to get color, I, I wanted to use colors that kind of went together. And again, I could write something on this. I could have stitched around here too, but I didn't. Very, very cute. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you look down below to all the links that I'm giving you underneath this video. And you will see every one of these that I have in this series will be in that link. So um, thank you for watching, everyone. This has been fun.